try something different here. I'm not really a fan of doing the forecast live. If you guys want me to do that, just let me know in the comments. But I'm going to do the best I can with what I have here. Like I said, I'm kind of going through some stuff with uh, some of the equipment and some of the subscriptions I use for this stuff. Like it actually costs you to, um, radar Omega, to use Radar Omega effectively on a PC. You have to actually have a subscription. Pivotal Weather is the same. So... I've been kind of out of a job for a little bit here. Try not to make this a vlog channel, but I figured I may as well be frank and just say what's going on here on this end. But yeah, that's my situation right now. I just started working again and uh, should have everything back to the way it was before. But yeah, just kind of what I've been dealing with lately. But anyway, though, we do have a lot of weather to talk about. I'm hoping this format works here, but current situation right here and i'm sure it's been talk of the town here as far as the weather community is concerned is the severe weather threats for sunday and monday here sunday's threat is mainly going to be centered around kansas and northern oklahoma north central oklahoma even but the main threat with those for tomorrow is going to be tornadoes and hail there is a 15 percent wind area now though that's going to be right over towards that kansas oklahoma border it's going to be just outside of wichita I do expect these storms to form right along the area of low pressure, which I would anticipate to be somewhere around here, I would say, where I put the circle. But we all know that this is very much interchangeable. This can change throughout the course of the next 24 hours pretty easily. So timing of this may be a little bit off compared to what we see on this video here. Just putting that out as a disclaimer now. But that being said here, we do have a day three slight risk as well. This is Monday, where we're looking towards the Mississippi Delta once again. We're over towards Greenville, Jackson, and areas off to the south here. We also have New Orleans in play, as well as Shreveport, Alexandria, and even have parts of eastern Texas in play. Along with further up to the north, a cold core setup, which is honestly a dynamic part of this storm system here. This dynamic storm system actually has the chance to produce winter weather behind this severe weather threat over here towards Iowa. So within a 24-hour period, there's a chance that some of these areas north of Des Moines may get severe weather and then snow not too long after that. If we look at the winter storm severity index, it kind of shows that potential as well. Not the highest probabilities I've ever seen, but they are there. They're, and they're above 50% in some areas too, so... That pretty much tells you all you need to know here. So if you're over here towards uh, northern Iowa in particular, especially over towards areas like Mason City, for example, get ready because you're going to have an active 48 hours ahead of you. But that being said, we go to days four through eight, and we're going to go ahead and talk about this as well. We're going to be looking at an increasing amount of activity as even through days four through eight, while there's no slight risk in effect, the predictability is too low which means there are some models that are picking up on potential for severe weather but there's not a lot of model agreement so the confidence isn't quite there to issue a slight risk for plus days in advance and you need to have a good bit of that in order to do that but that being said though we'll go ahead and actually take a look at some of the model data we have available here so this is what we're currently looking like right now. I have a lot of activity that has just cleared Florida. And I needed to pay attention to where this trough is because towards the surface, there is a low across this region here. And this is going to be a key component to the setup on Sunday. It's actually going to help inhibit it just slightly, but there are factors that will help overcome those inhibiting factors. So if we go forward here, and let's make sure I have this right. Okay, there we go. This is our trough that's going to be amplifying our severe weather setup for tomorrow definitely not the most stout setup could be looking at a little something popping up here and then towards the afternoon we may see increased activity over towards louisiana and mississippi I'm thinking this area in particular right here is going to be the point of interest but the thing with this setup here for sunday is this trough and this low pressure area that we're going to end up getting the thing to remember is that these low pressure areas have counterclockwise flow so in a normal situation, when you have a uh, severe weather setup out ahead of a with a uh, trough out ahead of it, you'll end up getting a pull of Gulf of Mexico moisture to the north. But what's going to happen is this low pressure, and I'm going to make sure I kind of symbolize the area I'm talking about. 
let's say it's going to be right here, right? And like I said, counterclockwise flow, if you look towards the back side of the system, you're going to get more southerly winds. And what that's effectively going to do is help push some of that moisture away from there. We will still get a moisture return towards this region up here, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult. It's going to take more time, so you're not going to get as rich of a moisture return as you could want in regards to looking for a severe setup. So overall, we're going to probably end up seeing dew points over towards the 50s, and we'll look at that map in just a minute to kind of verify that. But fact of the matter is here, this is going to help spare our region over here to the north and west over here towards the southern plains we are not going to have that be the case though however for monday so my concern for that setup increases just slightly though so we'll go ahead and continue to roll keep this ball rolling here if we can so this is what we're looking like with the monday setup again we already kind of verified the area of interest over here shower and storm activity mainly towards the Mississippi River Delta in particular maybe a couple other areas of interest over here towards Tennessee could be involved as well and then we'll watch this active weather push off to the north and east over the next couple of days could be a couple of isolated chances of severe as we head into the latter half of the week here but I do think as we go towards the 28th and beyond we could see a couple better setups in play here we don't see a lot of uh high amplitude with the uh, any sort of ridging or troughing here until we get towards the 30th and I've been kind of watching that date on and off where I could but the thing to make note of here is this setup looks a lot more impressive at least as far as the amplitude is concerned still a positively tilted trough nothing negatively tilted at the moment but even so with this trough and this little ski jump uh, look that we have here still have to be on the lookout for maybe some strong to severe storm activity as well you can also kind of see this going on with the euro model as well and you can see the troughing for the setup on monday heading into tuesday pretty much seeing pretty similar evidence here towards the mississippi delta where we could see increased storm activity here so seeing model con continuity is also a reassuring sign but in the days ahead here could maybe see an increase in activity if we get a good warm sector across the southeast maybe even into the mid-atlantic but as we continue to go forward here threat level is going to drop off just slightly and then really not until the 30th are we going to really see a more stout setup come into play and then of course towards april as we get more and more into the severe season we're probably going to see more probabilities like this and then also to make note of, there is a little bit of a trough right here. We've been kind of eyeballing this for a little bit here. Been a lot of uh, model discrepancy here as well, though. So switching over to a more familiar altitude for some of you folks, some of you weather weenies like myself, looking at the 500 millibar region here. It's the GFS that we're looking at here. This is some of the stuff that I still can look at on Pivotal Weather but also have advertisement here which take up so much CPU but this is the Sunday setup over here and really the forcing mechanism for those storms is going to be this weak low area right here you can see it kind of almost shaped out here or kind of uh, singled out here by this little circle that's right here it's that area that we're gonna have to be on the lookout for when it comes to severe weather potential and then we'll have to just go on from there We'll see the same setup come into play as we head into Monday here, and it'll look a little bit more stout as well. So as we keep moving here, I'm going to get that off there. This is heading into Monday afternoon. Like I said, storms are mainly going to be forming right along the frontal boundary, and this is going to be later into the afternoon. I think we'll see a line of thunderstorms, but I think all three hazards will be possible with this, and they're more likely as well. Meanwhile, if you look at these uh, pressure contour lines, I want you to pay attention to this number right here, 540. So in the pressure contour world, 540 is actually our 32 degree line. So I want you to watch where this line goes. I'm going to try to keep track of it with my cursor here. And anything that's a lower number than 540 is actually below freezing. So with that in mind here, we have to watch towards the backside of this system 
where we could be seeing some wintry precip coming into play here. And this low really gets its act together as we get into the overnight hours of Monday into Tuesday. So like I said before, that same area that we were talking about that could get severe weather, let's say over towards Des Moines and areas to the north, could get some wraparound snow on the backside of this. I really think the uh, big winner as far as the precipitation is concerned is going to be more so over towards southern and maybe even central parts of Minnesota. And we're going to see a pretty lengthy duration event with snow and also with the strong winds in play it could even potentially be blizzard conditions at times. So of course like I said before we're going to keep an eye on that. So after a while, we'll watch this storm system roll out here. And there's a couple of chances of severe weather. Nothing that I'm really impressed with. I'm really thinking we're going to be staying more to the south towards Florida for severe potential for a little bit here. Been kind of calling for that here and there, but like I said, when things started to go out here, it was a little bit more difficult. But this is what we're going to be potentially dealing with all the way up until the 30th when this storm system comes into play here. Now, like I said, there's a little bit of model discrepancy here as to how this plays out. From what I can see here, pretty sufficient warm sector here over towards the southeast and the Ozarks, even towards the central plains. And I think that could be a key component to our potential uh, March 30th, 31st setup, maybe even heading all the way into the 1st of April, a.k.a. April Fool's Day for those of you that still do it nowadays. Don't even hear about that much anymore. But anyhow while I'm getting off topic here I do see some evidence of confluence and diffluence here so maybe a couple setups could be possible here towards the southeast as we start out the month of April that brings back quite a bit of memories for some of us over here towards the southeast but this trough continues to dig and then we have another one that sets up as we go beyond April 1st heading into the third and the fourth here so with this warm sector potentially playing out towards the southeast, we could have multiple days of severe weather with this setup and then another trough coming in right behind that that looks really stout. Keep in mind, we're getting past 300 hours out, so this can easily go the other way within the course of the next 5 to 10 days. So we'll have to just keep an extra close eye on that. But this looks pretty stout as well, and then we'll have a ridge that comes in behind that where, where we're likely to see yet another setup behind that. It's severe season, folks, so you already know what the deal is. Euro is going to be pretty similar as far as appearance is concerned, especially towards the mid-range here, which is what this model really specializes in. So the loop is actually working here, which is good. It's the first time in a while it's done that for me. But you can pretty much see across the board here. Trough number one, number two. Then we have number three here right at the end of the month. Then another trough tries to develop right around the beginning of April, according to the Euro, but it's just not really locked in on that right now. I do think by tomorrow we'll have a better look and maybe we'll get an idea of what's going on with that. But we'll just have to wait and see. It's going to be another 12 hours before the next run comes in, which would be probably about maybe 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. So we'll see how that plays out. We'll go from there. But that's what we're looking like as we get into the medium to long term here. What the radar could look like, and we're going to start out with the Euro this time. I'm actually really happy with how this is moving. We're going to try and see if we can do the old format with this, but it's my software that's really kind of been holding me up here. Anyway, though, continue to get off topic here. Here is our storm system that we were talking about for Sunday. It's really going to be towards the evening hours where we see our severe potential ramp up. And the tornado potential will ramp up around this time as well with the low-level jet usually kicking in around OOZ, which would be about 8 o'clock Eastern time, so 7 o'clock Central. Here comes that wintry system to go along with that severe side as we go into Monday evening. And then here's our line of thunderstorms that we have to watch for severe potential as well. It's a pretty stout line of storms as we get into Tuesday. It does look like it starts to lose a little bit of steam as we head into Tuesday evening. And then, of course, we'll be watching the northeast for some rain. And then our next system will be sneaking in towards the end of the month. May have a little bit of severe potential. Looks pretty limited on the euro right now. And then after that, 
we could be seeing some increased winter potential over towards the Rockies here. We switch over to the GFS here. What we're going to be looking for is mostly identical, but I think as we get further out, things are going to start to pan out a little bit differently than what the euro is presenting. Starting out, of course, pretty much identical here. Increased, increasingly a uh, heavy corridor of snow over here towards the Minnesota and Iowa border here. And then eventually we'll start to see that snow really start to ramp up on the back side of this system. I will get some snow, but it's not quite as heavy as what I was seeing previously. Of course, we still have our severe weather to talk about for both tomorrow and Monday's setup. And then after that, we end up seeing a couple of wintry systems mainly going to be centered towards the northern tier of the U.S. Our next big system comes in right towards the middle of the month, or the end of the month, I should say. And like I said, we'll really have to be watching towards that uh, warm sector here over towards the southeast for potential for severe weather. After this moves out, though, we do get a couple of more impressive systems after that. Right now, like I said, I'm not putting too much merit into these because look at the time frame again. 300 hours out is really long, is a really long time, and a lot can change with these forecasts. We've seen it. And then looking at this set setup for the sixth here, this is looking pretty crazy. It's a really strong looking line of storms for sure. You normally don't see that kind of look that far out or in April in general. So I'm interested to see how that's going to play out. And then also as we head towards the seventh into the eighth here, we have a pretty big storm system that looks like it's going to come into the southeast and even bring some snow in towards the mid-Atlantic and northeast. As we get towards the end of this model run again like i said before the further out you look in the range can't really get a great idea of what to expect in the days ahead here so that being said we're going to go ahead and actually switch over to the h triple r here and get a look at what we could expect here in regards to the severe setup for the next couple of days here so we're going to start out with the basics here. We already kind of got a general idea of what our upper level winds are looking like. But really, it's those low level winds, that low level jet that I was talking about earlier, which is the level we're looking at now. That's going to be the key component to everything. So this is looking at tomorrow's setup here. This is overnight tonight, so you don't have to be concerned with this area. Just because you see those reds right there, which is showing 50 knots. No storms there to take advantage of that, so nothing to be concerned with. By the time we get into tomorrow, that's already cleared out over the area of interest. But by the time we get back towards that same time frame, it's built up once again. So if things go right here, we have 60 knots of low-level jet energy to potentially come into play for our severe weather setup. So if things pan out, we could see a couple of tornadoes. Not a guarantee, but definitely the potential is there for sure. As we go into the next day here, we see that increasing amount of low-level jet over here towards the delta here. And that's where we're going to be looking for severe weather once again. I do think that this may be a shorter duration event here. But with that low-level jet in play, we could see the potential again for maybe not only severe thunderstorms, but a couple of tornadoes as well. I do think that this setup is going to be a little bit more potent than the others mainly due to the fact that we will have much better moisture content available for monday versus sunday and you'll probably even be able to see the low pressure in this area i'll mark it out for you in case you can't but you want to look for the counterclockwise swirl here as we go into the next day here so you can see that there's some moisture return here but a lot of it's kind of staying off to the south Whereas we would be looking for those dew points that are in the 60s. We're kind of hanging around the mid 50s. Not uncommon for severe weather to happen. This is more prevalent with cold core setups. But with the typical setup, these dew points are typically a little bit under par here. It's where we get those dew points into the mid 50s where you still have to watch. But if I were to click on a sounding here, do have a marginal tornado threat. It's not the greatest loop on the hodiograph here. Surface temperatures are rather low, so this kind of has that look of a cold core setup. And, I mean, just the numbers with this setup just isn't that great. 
like I said, we have a number of inhibiting factors with the setup here. But if you actually look at the uh, if you actually look at the wind shear and the storm relative helicities, it's actually pretty impressive. 617 meters squared per second square is a pretty high number. And then on top of that, if you look at these wind barbs, you can kind of see a little bit of a change in direction here. So we have our speed shear and our directional shear in play. So while the tornado threat isn't significant necessarily, it's not zero. A lot of uh, the weather communities refer to it more as a non-zero tornado threat. If we had more dew points like this, I would be increasingly concerned and if those surface temperatures were a little bit warmer. But watch what happens as we head into Monday morning here. Look at how those dew points get into the 60s over here towards the Mississippi Delta as we get into the early part of the afternoon over here. This is going to help a lot for a much better setup for severe storms and maybe even a few tornadoes. While at this time frame we aren't expecting the storms to fire, I already can look at this hodiograph in the skew T and see that this looks a little bit better. You want that low level loop right here with this red line to kind of curve a little bit. The wider the curve, usually it results in a uh, better look for severe and tornad tornadic activity here. Like I said, really this is going to be heading into the late evening when these storms fire, but just looking at what we have now, dew point of 60 with a surface temperature of 69. Instability is really the only problem at this point in time, but as that front draws closer, we're going to get an increasing amount of instability. We'll actually switch to the NAM 3 kilometers so that way we can actually get a look at what we really have available since we're at the limit of the HRRR here. We're not going to get another run looking 48 hours until probably 8 o'clock, unfortunately. So, this times didn't line up for me. But this is what we're looking at as we get into OOZ. This is the time frame where we saw those storms firing. What we're going to be looking for is a looping hodograph like this. The main thing that we're working against in regards to tornadic activity is the lifting mechanism. There isn't a strong lift index here. You want to see numbers like negative 4 and beyond, or actually lower. So you want to see numbers like negative 4, negative 5, negative 7, etc. And you just aren't really seeing a whole lot of that, especially towards the mix layer, which is a key component. So the threat becomes a little bit more limited, but it's still not zero. But yeah, I'm expecting probably a little bit more along the lines of damaging wind setup here. Very moist atmosphere here, especially towards the lower levels. There is a little bit of a dry slot, but I wouldn't expect too much in the way of hail here. I think damaging winds might actually become the more prevalent threat as we drag into the evening and beyond. So, like I said, we looked at the dew points here. The surface temperatures are going to be better Monday. We look at Sunday setup here. For the most part, like I said, it's not going to be super warm over towards this region. That Gulf of Mexico moisture does help sometimes induce those warmer temperatures. Like I said, we're just kind of struggling to really get those surface temperatures beyond 60 here. Usually when you get to 60, that's usually about the bare minimum threshold. And we're kind of just sitting on the edge of that. I really think towards the Kansas-Oklahoma line is where we'd be most likely to get something a little bit more impressive. And like I said, really, it's kind of up in the air at this point. If we get a better moisture return by chance somehow, because it's not like it hasn't happened. Cough, cough, the uh, Ohio outbreak. But if you were to get a better moisture return, I think the severe threat would go up a little bit higher even so. It's just questionable how, how things will end up panning out here. If we go to the following setup for Monday here. Look at how those temperatures are a bit warmer. I think further to the south, the threat is a little bit better. And there you go. Nice little loop, wide looping uh, low level hodiograph here. So that's where that tornado threat is going to be a little bit higher. Instability still seems like it could be a little bit questionable around this time frame. I really think we would want to see some slightly higher numbers here. But 500 is sufficient enough. You're not going to see a lot of lightning out of these storms, but these uh, low-level winds are going to be a key component to everything as well. So like I said, I think there's going to be a brief window for severe, mainly for tornadic activity. And then we'll watch these uh, roll on out of here as we continue to go forward. So that being said, we'll go ahead now and take a look at what our instability is going to look like. And we'll uh, wrap this one up for you guys. This was supposed to be a live recording, but I kind of foobarred it, and then I wanted to try something different. 
but this is what we have here as we go into the setup for tomorrow instability is kind of lacking just a little bit but we have just enough instability to get some storms to fire going to be mainly hanging just above 500 to 900 joules per kilogram on cape like i said really it's going to be towards that oklahoma kansas line where we have the best chance for severe maybe even a few tornadoes and depending on how that wave kind of interacts with the mountains over here off the rockies if we go to the following day you'll see pretty much similar numbers maybe slightly higher numbers as we get closer to that frontal boundary but i'm expecting more so wind energy than i would um anything more along the lines of tornadic here but this is a uh, this is a decent look here we have a pretty good lift index we have decent dry slot at the mid levels of the atmosphere very saturated um, low level of atmosphere as well and with that we have the threat for some hail and maybe even a tornado like I said I'm not expecting a big outbreak with this but keep in mind we've been surprised already a few times this year especially the one that was about a couple weeks ago. So don't let your guard down, even if you're in one of these areas of interest. Another area of interest, like I said before, is over towards Iowa. We have some decent instability there. Like I said, over towards maybe about 500 to 700 joules per kilogram here. But like I said, I'm really thinking more of a wind event, if anything at all. It's not really an impressive setup. It's really just going to be where that uh, storm front it, It's really going to be where that low pressure is, where we can get maybe a little bit of a storm front to develop. And we could see a little bit of everything. Wouldn't surprise me if some hail popped up with it too. Because usually in that uh, cold core type setup, you can get a nice little dry slot. And those lapse rates will a lot for some uh, elevated activity, aka some hail. That being said here, it's pretty much all we have to talk about in the uh, short term and the long term here. Like I said, we'll be back to our normal setup soon enough. Appreciate you guys bearing with me. It's been a rough time over here, but I'm trying to make it happen for you guys. I'm trying to keep the content rolling as best as I can. Also, stay tuned for an outlook for spring and also the April outlook. We can do that as normal, but everything else is kind of sketchy right now. But again, thank you for your patience. You want to support the channel you know what to do smash that like button hit that subscribe button hit that share button also check the link in the description if you want to help support the channel a little bit more but that being said appreciate you guys a bunch for being here i'll see you guys soon this was all done in one take so there's no editing here it's the real thing but that being said it's been tired metalhead weatherman take care have a good rest of your evening and that's that